Zenith. Zenith? Zen I'm going with Zenith. And if you don't like it, you can take your criticisms of how I speak to the comments as usual. The Zenith El Primero is one of the classic sports chronographs, especially automatic chronographs. Now, that might be because Zenith was one of the first manufacturers to make an automatic chronograph back in 1969. One of the first. There is some controversy around that, and some of it depends on how you define first. But in an impressively bold marketing move, Zenith called its new watch El Primero, which means first and Spanish, not unlike someone putting the word terrific in the name of their YouTube channel. And maybe being first-ish is one of the reasons for the longevity and the success of the El Primero, but I think a better explanation, better than it just being old, is that the classic El Primero has a great design and always has had a great movement. In fact, from 1988 to 2000, Rolex used a Zenith movement as the base movement for the Rolex Daytona for 12 years in the modern era. So that was back when in-house movement wasn't a marketing technique, and nobody cared where the movement came from as long as it worked well, and it did. Ah, uh, would those days but come again? It was a simpler time. And about the classic design, I think Zenith has done a killer job of maintaining the El Primero look while adding these new complications to the watch for the first time. Well, kinda for the first time. See, actually, back in 1970, Zenith produced 25 triple calendar El Primero prototype watches. These watches never made it to market, and Zenith abandoned the idea until this year, 2024. In January, Zenith announced six or three El Primero triple calendar watches, three dial options, with bracelets or with a strap. The green dials are called boutique editions. I assume they're called that because to buy them, you have to actually go in a store like some kind of savage. But I was able to add both of these to my cart on the Zenith website and get all the way to the checkout with both of these watches when the purchase button showed this message. Too real, Zenith. Not cool. Actually, of course, I made the button say that. But the rest is true, including me not being able to afford these. Though wouldn't it be nice if watch websites were this honest? This is the white dial triple calendar on a bracelet, if you couldn't tell. And also, if you couldn't tell, it's called a triple calendar because it displays the day of the week, the month, and the date. There's also a moon phase complex complication inside the 6 o'clock subdial. A moon phase complication is not technically part of a triple calendar complication. Day, date, and month, those are your three calendars. The moon is bonus, just like it is in our solar system, I guess. On a bracelet, this watch sells for $13,900. The standard El Primero Classic with only the date complication, that sells for $10,300. This is 38 millimeters wide, 46 millimeters long, and I measure it at 14 millimeters thick with the big dome sapphire crystal. Other reviewers who I think just relied on information provided by Zenith say that this is 13 millimeters thick, but either they're wrong or I'm in some sort of energy vortex again where millimeters are different. Honestly, it wouldn't be the first time. It has 19 millimeter lugs, which might make strap pairing a bit tricky, but I think it's worth it for this kind of perfection of proportions that this watch has. It has 50 meters of water resistance. 50 meters in the Zenith verse means you can wear this watch while swimming, which is great. If I'm swimming so Somewhere and I see you wearing this in a pool, you and me, we're gonna be friends. That is, if you're not too intimidated by my physique. Remember, I'm both a middle-aged dad and a watch collector, so I've got that going for me, which is nice. On my 7-inch wrist, this is just ideal. This 38 millimeter diameter with this classic design, not exactly vintage, it's just tasteful and kind of timeless. The size and the design are just great together. I wore this watch for a couple days before I measured the thickness, and I was really surprised to find out that it is 14 millimeters. Again, assuming I'm not in a vortex that bends space and time. It feels great, and it's really not too thick, especially considering that it's an automatic chronograph, triple calendar, with some functional water resistance. What's great about this size and style is that I think it'll work for a lot of people. If you're used to wearing 40 millimeter sports watches like the Daytona or the Speedmaster, Master, which is kind of 40 millimeters, this will work great for you. If you prefer 38 millimeter watches, good news, this is 38 millimeters. I mostly like how this looks on the bracelet, and it feels okay, but the bracelet is the weak point for me. First, as always, I don't like the polished center links. They look nice for a second, but they get scratched and greasy almost instantly. Now, maybe that's just my high-fat diet and calloused fingers, but I suspect that every owner will wreck this bracelet in a matter of days. And then there's the clasp. So, it has five micro-adjustments, which is nice, but I expect more from a clasp on a watch that costs $14,000. A real adjustment system and a clasp that feels luxurious. This one feels cheap. I felt and used better clasps on watches one-tenth of the price of this El Primero. 
the Super Luminova application is pretty good. That's something I didn't have high hopes for and it's okay. The loom is not super bright because there's just not a lot of it. Bigger markers and hands would hurt the design of this watch, so fine, it's fine. Setting the watch is interesting. There are many pushers on the side of the case for the day of the week and the moon phase. That's common for calendar watches. But where it gets weird is the date and the month. The month is advanced by fully running through all 31 dates of a month. So for example, if today's date was the third and you accidentally set the watch to the fourth, if you went past the third, you either have to keep going through the whole year to get back to your month, or you can hack the watch for a day and pause it until the actual time catches up with the watch time. Again, excluding any vortex you might be in. That's awkward and it's not great, especially considering this is a newly developed movement. This is the L Primero 3610 and it has 60 hours of power reserve. Like all El Primero movements, this beats at 5 hertz, or you could call that 10 times per second. It's a high beat movement, which usually results in a more accurate movement. And in a chronograph, it means that you can time more granularly than with lower beat movements. And this chronograph makes it relatively easy to time as precisely as one tenth of a second, and that's because the second hand makes a full rotation not in 60 seconds, but in just 10 seconds. But honestly, if you're timing something and you need to know the accuracy to the tenth of a second, use something digital, or better yet, have a professional cook your steak. They'll use a thermometer instead, like someone who actually knows what they're doing. Comparing this watch to similar watches in this price range, a Rolex Daytona, which you can't get anyway, will set you back $15,000 and doesn't have a triple calendar or a moon phase complication, so pretty useless to the burgeoning werewolf market. It. There's the Breitling B25 Daytora, $14,500. It is water resistant, but it's only available on a strap. And it's 42 millimeters wide and a millimeter thicker than the El Primero. It's 15 millimeters thick. So I'm not sure that the same buyer would cross shop these two watches. So if you like a triple calendar watch, there's something like the JLC Master Control Calendar. $14,600, no bracelet available, but it does have 50 meters of water resistance. 40 millimeters, so it's a nice size, but it's not a chronograph, which is kind of the whole point of the El Primero, so I'm not sure why I'm talking about this watch, or any watch, ever. It's complicated. <laughs> complicated. If you can think of some good competition for this El Primero triple calendar, let me know. I'm curious what's out there. And yes, I know that there's a Longines and a Frederick Constant and probably some other watches that are great for their price. But at this level of watchmaking, to my eyes, even though I'd need to sell my eyes to afford this or even worse, sell some of my watches, there's nothing quite like this El Primero triple calendar considering its price, its looks, and its complications. 